I'm Elizabeth. I teach here at the college. I teach office management, business, and information technology. And this sort of sort of brings all that together. And one word in one of the committees that I'm on we've been talking about recently is a idea of nation building. In the context of tribal colleges, it's nation building is to support the economic development, the cultural development, language revitalization of the community that we live in. And so this is sort of a, a, a piece of that. It's sort of being making it possible to use our current laptops to make these marks and continue the language on the current technology is how we're gonna keep it going. We're gonna talk about context first. Where's the Nadek spoken? Where do we speak it? In Alaska. In Alaska, all over Alaska? Yeah. No. North Slope. North Slope. And, and a little bit of Canada, right? We yeah. stretch over a little bit over here. These are some related languages that come from maybe where we're, where our language comes from, but we're up here on the North Slope. But it does extend a little bit into Canada. And Inupiaq language, here's the problem. According to Wikipedia, 6,000 people speak the language. That is 15% of the ethnic population. Now I've talked to the IHLC and they think that this number is low, but even if you multiply this by five and you say it's 30,000 people, Right, and that, that Wikipedia's got the number off by a factor of 10, we're only talking about 60,000 people. That's not enough to sustain a language. So the more that we can do to help make it easier to use it regularly, I think we're doing a good thing. Diacritical marks. They're also called diacritics. It has to do with pronunciation. And they're used in many languages. So if you see an N, with a tilde on it, an N with a little swoopy thing on it, a brow, that also exists in Spanish, that same letter. And it has the same effect in Spanish. It has the same sound in Spanish. That mark is sort of an international symbol that tells us this is what I want you to do. So it has to do with pronunciation or a stress. And some examples, we don't say El Nino for the weather pattern, El Nino. And that's the same sound, N, sort of an NY sound, that you hear in Inupiaq, where you see the same letter. This means resume. We're going to resume operations right after the snowstorm. What's this word? Resume. I'm going to submit my resume for that job. They're spelled the same, but because of the diacritical marks, we change the pronunciation. And then this one? Elisavik, right? Jerga? Elisavik. Yeah, you hear that doesn't quite sound like. Good. So there's a whole different sound due to the diacritical marks. So there's six letters in Anupak that have these marks. And I'm going to just play little videos and, sh and let you hear the sound. Uh, these s videos aren't necessarily from exactly from the North Slope, but they're um, from related languages that use the same letters. Olarin 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 Aranak 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 So that was an agnak that and that was the word for woman. Here's the three L's. See ya See ya See ya Eil Rutak Eil Rutak Ar-na-re-sa-lak-tu-din. Sevishak Sevishak Tikinyak tuk uvlaku Tikinyak tuk uvlaku Tikinyak tuk uvlaku Kinya atkin Kinya atkin Kinya atkin In you paying a lung up In you paying a lung up In you paying a lung up Suming up, you see. Suming up, you see. 
sumingok bisi. I hear a little bit of a Y sound in here, and then I hear a little bit of a back of the throat kind of sound coming in here. The enye is a universal mark, so it, it would sound the same in Spanish as it does in Anupia. This one um, is sort of an NG combined sound. Nah. These Letters are used in Inupiaq, but they're not exclusive to Inupiaq. Microsoft offers unique keyboards, or, or what they call keyboard overlays, for a lot of languages. So for Swedish, you would install a Swedish overlay on your computer, because Swedish has 29 letters in their alphabet, and they would, it would change some of the keys to those letters. There's a way for that. For Chinese, there's a way for that. But 9 million people speak Swedish and 1.3 billion speak Chinese, so there's a demand for it. There's not one for the 6,000 people that are speaking in Nupiak right now. So that's not kind of the, the easiest way to do it. But that's a nice way to do it because it allows for spell checking. Um, it allows for, for a nice integrated system. So if we get all of us using it and then we all train 1,000 people on how to do this, then we might start getting pressure on Microsoft to, to change this. But since it's not so widely used, we're having to do some workarounds. So I went through and, and sort of want to talk a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages of the different methods. One way is there, there's a font. There actually is a font. And it came out of this place called Alice School. And they have this font, and this is the way it works. You install the font, and then as you type a word, if you want an L with a dot, you type an X while you're in the font. And then if you want to use an X, you go out of the font, maybe you go to Arial, and then you come back and you type an X and then it'll type that. So it, it's supposed to be a font. And that, that, people like that. Hey, I can get a font. You have it in your document and it acts somewhat like a font. But you need to know this. You need to know that X equals L with a dot. And that doesn't really help you learn that Ilisavik is not spelled I-X-I, -I, right? You're kind of typing misspellings when, when you're using the font. I'll tell you, I'd be surprised if this website's here. A lot of links are dead and it's not quite working and I'm kind of worried the font's not going to be there for too much longer. But really why I stopped using it was that I would prepare a presentation on my computer with the font and then I would take the presentation on a USB and I'd put it in one of these computers or this computer here and it would change my word Ilisavik back to this. So I'd have to install the font onto that computer. So that doesn't work out real well. What other people do is they use symbols or characters or unicodes, right? On your insert tab of Excel or Word or PowerPoint, you'll see this. And when you click that, you get something that looks like this. And usually what most of us do is we kind of look for the letter that we want or look for the mark that we want. We click that and it inserts it into our document. Not ideal. Okay, and plus to find these six letters, you're going to do a lot of hunting and searching. So what you would actually do, which would be more efficient in your time, is you would know the code. So to get the L with the slash, you type 0142. And you just have to know it's 0142 gets you L with the slash. You're not going to want to have to look that up and type out 0142 every time you do it. There's an advantage to this for like intermediate word users or intermediate Excel users. They tend to like this version. It's familiar to them. But the disadvantage is you need to know the Unicodes. You need to know those codes or you're going to spend a long time searching for them. Your hands need to leave the keyboard. And any time that you're like in the middle of a word, you have to leave with your mouse and go and search for something in here and then come back to your keyboard, that can be annoying. And depending on how your IT department installed Microsoft onto your computer, you may not have all of them available to you. They may install a limited set for you to save memory or to faster install or whatever reason. 
So that's sort of the advantages and disadvantages of that one. Copy and paste. This is a real popular one. Some people have a cheat sheet. Some people have a document on their desktop that has the six letters and every time they need it, they kind of go to that. Or you know on the Ilisavic website, Ilisavic has got the letters on it. You go to the Ilisavic website every time you want to type the word Ilisavic, you copy it and you paste it into your document. Or you might cut and paste little letters and bring them into your document. How fun is that? Time consuming. You're trying to type and you're trying to type and you're trying to type and then you're kind of having to, oh wait, let me go find that word. The first time you go find the word, the second time you go find the word, the third time you're like, forget it, they'll know what I mean. And we start to lose the letters. But that's, copy and paste is one way to do it. You find the, the needed word, or you create a cheat sheet, or you have on your desktop, you have the letters that you want, and you copy and paste from there. The advantage is it's quick, it's easy, it's available, you don't have to download a font. And anybody who's taken beginner Word or Excel, they know how to copy and paste. It doesn't matter what computer we're on, it's going to work. The disadvantage is it may take time to find something to copy. If it's a word like Gilesavik that I use every day, probably, it's going to be handy to me. But other words, I'm not motivated to expand my vocabulary. So yeah, if you're typing it and you're creating the word yourself, you're more likely to remember the word. And so when we talk about retaining the language and revitalizing the language, I think this diminishes that goal a little bit. This is the saddest method. It goes something like this. For certain fonts, we literally add a little dot as a drawing tool, as a shape. What's nice about this is that in some graphic design programs, there's a lot of fonts, but there's not these letters in those fonts. The disadvantage, it's a little slow, <laughs> right? <laughs> you want to move that G a little bit over and then you got to move the dot over and then you got to remember, okay, well, well, you know, I moved the pictures, now the dot isn't lining up with the G. That can get really annoying. So it's slow to create and slow to edit. Another method is the keyboard. I said at the beginning, Microsoft doesn't have a keyboard for Anupiak, but Language Geek created one for Anupiak actually one for all the Alaska Native languages, which is really helpful, particularly if you're doing a lot of typing. So if you're doing a lot of typing in Inupiaq, you're typing paragraphs and the paragraphs include a lot of Inupiaq words that need these diacritical marks, the Language Geek keyboard can be very helpful. The big advantage is you can keep typing. You don't have to have any special setup. You don't have any special features. It's based on Unicode, which means that it will transfer over to other computers. If you create the document on computer A, then you take that document on a USB to computer B, it will, with the keyboard, still recognize the diacritical marks. The disadvantage that I see with the keyboard is you don't get the language learning that I think you get when you type the word as it should be. Let me give you an example. The keyboard is going to make the colon the G with the dot. So you press the colon key, you get a G with a dot. What that means is when you're typing the word Ilisavik, for example, in the middle of that word, you're going to have a colon instead of a G. I don't think that really helps you learn how to spell that word as much as if you typed a G in the middle of that word. So I see that as a disadvantage. The other disadvantage is if you don't do a lot of typing of these words, remember that colon is now a G with a dot. So if you want the colon, you kind of have to fidget, fidget, fidget to kind of get to the colon. Then when you want the G with a dot, you kind of have to fidget, fidget, fidget back. Now, I will say that the application is good, but it is some fidgeting. So while I think that this is not the best option, it is a very good option. This one works. And New Back Studies has been doing this one for years, so this one's a good one. Autocorrect. Anybody use autocorrect on your computer? You probably don't even notice that you're using it. It's annoying in text, right? You get, do you ever get those funny, funny texts where it just changes the whole thing, the whole meaning of everything you have to write? So, but in, in, on the computer, it actually works very, very well. So the way this is, is you set up shortcuts. All right, and so that every time you type in parentheses and parentheses, it automatically changes it to end with a brow. If you type in the word T-E-H, it changes it automatically to the. If you type in first, the number one and then S-T, Word will automatically change it to one and then it'll put the S-T in superscript. Did Microsoft ask you if that was okay? No, it just knows. 
That's called autocorrect. Now I'll just take you through how to, how to do this. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna go at the top of the ribbon in all the Microsoft programs, you will see file. It's all the way over on the right. And when you click on file, you get something that looks like this. This is in PowerPoint. If you're doing it in Word, it's blue. In Excel, it's green. But it's going to look like this. And at the bottom, you'll see something that says options. So you get this options. You click on that. And you'll see up here, it says proofing. And then you'll see on proofing, you'll see autocorrect options. So you have autocorrect options. And then this pops up. All right, this is your, your new friend. And what we're going to do is, what you'll see here is, if you've ever typed in, in Word, you've typed in parentheses C parentheses, it automatically gives you the copyright symbol. And all we're going to do is set that up so that when you type in parentheses, double L parentheses, you get L with that. Here's the little trick. Just typing in parentheses L parentheses and getting this symbol is not going to work. You're going to have to copy and paste this letter to the with. So you type the shortcut here that you want to use, parentheses L, double L parentheses, for example. You hit OK. You come back and do the next one. Let's start with the N. So parentheses, N parentheses in the replace box. And then copy and paste the N tilde into this box. You hit OK. Technically, any shortcut key should work. But everyone using the same ones increases the chances that we'll kind of be familiar with it. Yeah. Different fonts equals different results. These are the four most common fonts in the Microsoft world. These are the four. And you see they all look nice. They all fit in, right? The L and the G. When we get to Bauhaus, you'll see it doesn't fit. It doesn't quite fit right in some fonts. So you need to kind of just be aware. It, not all fonts to include these six letters. I so fell in love with this method that I don't, uh, when I, you know, I type Illisavic a couple times a day. So I created an autocorrect with Illisavic. And so it just automatically changes without my having to type in the L and the G in the parentheses when I type Illisavic.